Hello and welcome to this video. What you see here on my desk are logs and tools which are meant to be sent out to a buddy who wants to start log picking or at least he wants to try whether he likes picking logs. So I thought I will make him a nice starter package. The logs here on the top are only equipped with standard pins and these two have also uh, security pins. Then for the tools we have a selection of picks and tension wrenches which I think is appropriate to most of the normal locks. So for this video um, it will contain two parts. First I will quickly demonstrate how lock picking actually works with the use of this clear lock. And the second part will be picking of all these locks and therewith I will explain the usage of the tension wrenches and the picks and we'll tell a little bit about um, yeah, tensioning and setting pins and so on and so forth. So that I hope that this video is also helpful for uh, newbies to the lock sports hobby, for interested people in general. So let's continue uh, with the first part of the video. I will clean up the desk and then I'll be back. Okay, so how does lock picking actually work? I have this clear look here where you can see the inside. And what we see are pin stacks, six of them, one through six. The last one is the retaining pin for the plug, so that the plug does not come out when you, when you turn it. Um, every stack consists of a spring, a driver pin, and a key pin, which you can see here. And also when I lift up the whole stack you can see spring, driver and key pin. In this state all the driver pins are inside the chambers of the plug and so you cannot uh, turn the plug. I'll just use the key, uh, key like this. You cannot turn the plug. Um, but the key pins have all different length and they meet the cutouts on the key. So we have uh, long key pins and one and two, a shorter one and three, and so on and so forth. And when you insert the key, the length of the key pins uh, meet the cuts and the key, and so you can turn the plug. And here you can see the key pins. They're all, um, they all clear the shear line, and so you can turn the plug. Now when you insert the wrong key, I just demonstrate it like so, you can see that um, either the key pin is lifted too high and also blocks the shear line, or the uh, key pin is not lifted high enough and so the driver pin blocks the shear line. So that's the reason why a wrong key doesn't open the lock. But now how can we pick locks? Um, we need a pick and with this pick we can individually lift every uh, pin but of course they won't stay and therefore we need to tension the plug and as every mechanical um, system all the locks have imperfections which means when you uh, turn the plug you will uh, find that one or more stacks will bind at the um, at the time when you when you turn the uh, plug when you tension the plug and some will stay springy. So that's because of the imperfection. And the, uh, the method is to pick the stacks that bind first and they will stay picked because when you pick them the plug turns just a little bit and then uh, the next stack binds. So let's try that. I apply tension and you see one and two are still uh, springy, three as well, but here in the back they are not springy anymore and I can, I start with six, I can lift it and it stays. And I can lift five, I can lift four, I find it. And now three is still springy, two, one is binding and two is okay and I think three is it's remaining and it's open. All right. And you can see here that um, the key pins 
um, have different lengths because no key is currently inserted and so the shear line is not clear but with the help of the of the tensioning we were able to uh, to pick the lock also without a key and that was pretty easy because this clear lock has um, not very tight tolerances and it is a pretty open keyway quick addendum to show you a common problem when picking locks and it's oversetting you might not always be lucky enough to access the pin so nicely like in this lock and um, other locks have uh, better tolerances and then you run into a problem when picking a stack that you don't feel when the pin has reached the shear line and you might overset the, overset the stack and then it looks like this that you push the pin too far and then the key pin actually blocks the shear line and so no matter what you do with the rest of the pins you will never get this lock open you should um, be able to feel when you have overset a, uh, a stack and by releasing the tension you might be lucky enough and the stack returns and you can continue picking the lock okay now let's pick some real locks and here are the tools the picks and the tension wrenches this hook is a very strong one but also very thick and it's useful for open keyways then we have uh, two sparrows hooks uh, one is a shallow one the right and the left is a little bit deeper then we have another uh, euro hook from sparrows it's this hook but it's thinner it's very flexible and you can compare the thickness of these two the, the right is the thin one and the uh, left is the normal hook the thin is 0.4 millimeters while the normal one I believe it's uh, 0.4 six millimeters so the thin one is very good for um, very narrow keyways then we have a rake which is a very powerful tool for some locks with uh, standard pins or uh, if the lock is made with uh, low precision all right then we have the tension wrenches these are for the open side uh, these are for the pin side and these are for the open side of the keyway and I was always confused when I heard people talking about uh, this as the top of the keyway and this as the bottom of the keyway because for European uh, people uh, a lock or a keyway looks like this so the orientation is pins are at the bottom and uh, the open side is on the top but in the US uh, locks are mounted on the doors like this and so people normally refer to this as the top of the keyway or the pin side and this as the bottom of the keyway the open side all right, now let's pick some locks. Let's start with this lock. It's a cheap Chinese padlock with bad tolerances and a wide open keyway. So, it should be easy to open. Um, you could use this type of tension tool uh, at the open side, but then it takes away a little bit of the space from this nice wide open keyway. And therefore, I prefer to use uh, this tension tool it's made for the pin side tensioning, has two ends, one long end and one short end. The long end is used for padlocks with a cover so that you can then still uh, reach the plug. But here everything is nice and flat and so I will tension it with a shallow end. And you just have to apply a little bit of tension, use your strong pick, uh, check for some pins, push them down and you open. I think there are only two or three pins active in this lock and it's a great confidence builder for the first minute of lock picking uh, you will get it open just immediately and it's good for getting used to uh, the tools and how to hold the um, padlock in the hand how to tension the plug um, against the spring tension and yeah, how to hold the pick and so on and so forth and you could also have some fun with the rake just apply light tension, brush over the pins, and it's open. Pretty easy, nice confidence builder. But now let's move on to a real lock. And I've prepared um, a nice Euro lock uh, with five pins, only standard pins as drivers. And I added this uh, plug here at the end so that uh, one can nicely hold it in the hand. Very 
nice and comfortable. It has a Yale style keyway and as far as tensioning goes um, we could use uh, tensioning at the pin side but only uh, turn it uh, clockwise, uh, counterclockwise because uh, clockwise the tension wrench would uh, escape from this edge but I will use uh, tensioning at the open side anyway because you can see it's then very nice and comfortable to hold in the hand and uh, to tension. Yeah, just make sure that this doesn't uh, bind up, so it should be a little bit uh, away from the plug. So tension it like this, and this has the only disadvantage that sometimes the, the tension wrench binds um, at this edge here, and then you would not be able to uh, tension the plug. You can check this by turning back the plug with your pick and see if it moves, and yeah, it does. So it's uh, no problem here, but before you can, or before you should pick, pick the lock, just use your pick, insert it in the keyway, and feel all the five pins. Hear them clicking, feel how you can access them with the tip of your pick, and once you're familiarized with this, Tension the plug and see what changes, and you will feel, ah, pin 5 is binding, it's not under spring tension anymore. And you have to push on it in order to get it set. Yeah, so the binding order is 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, and now let's pick the lock. So insert the pick all the way in, apply uh, tension, just Change the lightning a little bit. Okay, insert the pick, apply tension, feel the first pin, five, four, three, two, and probably one. And it's open. So, very easy pick, only standard pins. Define binding order, very nice and easy. I'm sure you will get uh, very soon, uh, very quickly in this lock. Okay, let's move on to the next lock. It's this uh, nice padlock here. Um, has a wide open keyway, but again, only standard pins. And this lock likes heavy tension. And again, I will apply tension on the pin side. As I said, this lock likes heavy tension. Binding order is one, two, three, four, five, most of the time. <laughs> so let's start picking. One, two, three, four. Probably five. Let's see if something has dropped. Yeah, one has dropped. So it's a little bit more tricky, but actually not really bad. So also, I'm sure you will get very soon uh, into this lock after some uh, time of practicing. Also very fun. So let's move on to a different story, and uh, we have had nice wide open keyways and uh, standard pin so far but this lock is different you can tell from the keyway that this is not nice anymore it's very paracentric narrow uh, curved so therefore i've included this pick here so you can um, insert it here and with some oh, with <laughs> a little bit of effort you can reach up um, into the pin chamber and uh, pick the pins. And as we use uh, this uh, area of the keyway, that area is actually unused and therefore I will use it for uh, tensioning. So insert the tension wrench here and you can see it's not binding, it's nicely tensioning the plug. And I apply 
not too much tension because this pick is not really uh, uh, strong it's uh, it bends very easy so all the way in light or medium medium to light tension and let's see now we have to not only struggle with the pins and the tensioning and so on but also with the warding and don't get obstructed um, by the keyway concentrate on the pins and try to identify if you're picking the warding and not the pins yeah, it's not the easiest uh, pick in the world so to speak maybe I've overset something so I reset one good click let's see if I get another good click no let's try again And it's open. A little bit of a fight and you have to get used to this uh, keyway but once you're yourself familiarized with how to maneuver uh, around this corner and uh, yeah, push your pick um, all the way up um, you will also get into this lock but this keyway is a different story. So so far only standard pins but now let's move on to uh, spool pins. Here is a giant spool and I've prepared a little sketch how these spool pins actually work. Let's assume that this is a uh, pin stack and we have a, a chamber in the housing and a chamber in the plug just like one vertical line here in this lock. And let's assume you have all pins picked and your shear line is actually clear beside of one uh, stack where we have a spool and this spool would then um, tilt like so and would cause the plug to, to turn a little bit. Um, that's the uh, purpose of these spool pins so that the plug uh, does not easily open when you pick all the pins but you have to apply a special method because you have to um, move up the uh, spool all the way to the housing and while doing this the plug will return almost to the neutral position and if you're lucky you will get the uh, pin the spool set um, just to the shear line and then the lock would open. But there are some problems involved with this method. For example you could push it too far and if, this is, if my finger is the key pin um, you would then still block the shear line and the lock would not open. You could also uh, not pick it all the way it needs like so and then this thick part of the spool would block the shear line or while picking the spool um, um, the plug turns back too far and all the other pins reset or some of them. So this is the fun you will have with spool pins and we have a lock an Abus with spool pins but fortunately uh, this Abus has a very wide nice open keyway and that's good because when we look at the bidding we can see it has a lot of ups and downs uh, next to each other so that we need all this uh, space in the keyway okay it's also not the easiest pick in the world but let's see I apply tension at the pin side and again use this strong pick let's start with one, one spinning, a nice click. 
3's binding, get a nice click, and you've seen the core turned a little bit into the open direction, which means that now we have to deal with spool pins, and we have three spools inside the slot, which are now um, blocking the shear line, and we have to find them. So two is the first one, and you can see the counter rotation, hopefully, when I pick the spool. Got it? It's not, it's not really easy to pick these spools, because they have sharp edges, I believe. So now let's move on. That's, that's four. Maybe I pushed it too far. I released tension and uh, the overset pin returned and got back my nice four set. Yeah, four set is called when uh, the plug turns a little bit, but it uh, stops because of the um, because of the spools. So four set is back, and now let's see what's missing. I believe five is missing. Oh, got it. Now something else has dropped. Let's check two. Sometimes it's easier to um, pivot the pick here or to, to rest the pick here on this edge and sometimes it's easier to uh, push it in like so and to push the pins uh, in a more uh, parallel movement. It's giving me feedback, and it's open. Nice, uh, great fun with this lock, with picking spools. Uh, quite a different experience um, compared to standard pins. Okay, now let's move on to the last one. It's this Basi lock, and I bought it for bump testing. Uh, you know the keys that are have a bidding all to the lowest level and then you insert it, uh, it and uh, knock it with a hammer and um, some or many uh, locks are then willing to open. Um, if you don't know about bumping, check out some videos um, on YouTube. There are great uh, tutorials about uh, how bumping actually works. So I've bought this for bump testing but actually it's a normal lock with normal uh, pins inside, so it's a BASI with some security pins. Um, and this time I will use uh, tensioning like so with my thumb, because it uh, fits nice in the keyway here and it doesn't bind the core. And I will use this uh, little bit deeper Eurohawk and just go by the feeling. Apply light to medium tension and see which pins bind. You can hear these satisfying clicks. Eventually you get a false set. You've seen it turned into a nice false set and you get nice counter rotation here and it's open. Nice! So that's a fun lock. Once you get used to spool picking, this is really fun. And some more words um, about the picking direction and tensioning uh, position. When you pick a lock clockwise or you pick the lock the same lock counterclockwise, the binding order changes, and you're actually uh, picking um, uh, yeah, not picking a different lock, but it feels different. So. This is uh, something you should be aware of, that when you can pick a lock uh, clockwise, that does not mean you can pick it uh, with the same effort uh, counterclockwise. So this might differ a lot. And also tensioning uh, from the open, at the open side or at the pin side might influence um, how successful you are in uh, picking this lock. Yeah, so that's all I have to say about uh, lock picking for beginners. So here is the starter uh, pile of uh, locks that I will send out, and here are all the tools and the keys. 
tension ranges, the picks, and so on and so forth. Yeah, I hope you found this um, little picking marathon interesting and helpful. Um, ah, this lock will not be part of the package, it's uh, my clear lock. <laughs> yeah, everybody else, um, thank you very much for watching and happy picking. Bye bye!